think about this. We are below. This is day two below this whole trend line here. If you guys notice. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another uh, edition of uh, the Access of Trade uh, nightly wrap-up show. Happy Monday, happy rainy Monday here in uh, New Jersey. Hope everybody uh, is doing well. So let, let's talk about the tape. So today they labeled um, the sell-off today, right? As the day that social media went dark. Or down detector, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Tinder, dog shit, cat shit, anything under the sun that had to do anything with .com. Some Zoom, member, uh, some Zoom uh, users had some problems. Tinder had some problems. Verizon, Comcast. You could blame. You know, you you could write a narrative. You know, till till the house you know falls apart. You could write a narrative to make you feel better. The reality is very simple. We we talked about this uh, all of last week. We were sell bias because. The Qs, right? The Qs lost the 50-day moving average. And uh, for four, five, six consecutive days, uh, they were putting in lower highs, lower lows, and kept on getting rejected uh, off the five-day moving average, right? If you see this orange line here, it's the five days. So one, two, three, four, five, six days in a row rejected off uh, those areas. So the idea that uh, the media is going to run with the idea that, hey, you know, we went down because everything, you know, everything under the sun on social media wasn't working. Okay, if that makes you feel better. But the reality is the longer the base below the 50-day moving average, the higher probability it was going to get down to the next demand zone, which was that 256, 257. And we were pretty much looking at a scenario of retesting uh, Friday's lows. And that was kind of a big deal. And not only did we uh, test Friday's lows, we closed below it. If you guys remember last week's video, any close uh, below that 257, 256 level was kind of going to be a big deal. And then we were looking basically at a scenario of the next move to 349, maybe 347 and change on the Qs. And if you look at the SPY, kind of the same thing. We're one, two, three, four, five, six days in a row below the 50 day moving average. And this is the first close below this whole channel here. And if we start confirming uh, tomorrow as well, you should see a move uh, somewhere right here around this four, you know, 422, 423 level, another five uh, points in the SPY. So the idea that, you know, you're turning around and trying to compensate the selling with some sort of reason, if it makes you feel better, right? I, I, again, I think... Uh, traders these days are, or at least experienced traders these days, they're, they're a lot smarter based on uh, their past experiences. You don't need a pacifier to make yourself feel better. You, need a, you don't need a Band-Aid to kind of cover up the wounds. You have to kind of face the market with the reality and trade both sides of the market. The idea that uh, a trader based on this action, based on this technical action, can go out and tonight do their chart work and start looking for breakouts is, is on a different planet. And the most important part is when you're looking in the face of a channel that is underneath supply, there is no such thing as breakouts. Okay, there's no, I don't care how good the news is on your stock it will get sold, okay? It's just, it's just the reality. Nobody's gonna sit there uh, trying to get a diamond in the rough uh, in a sea, right? In a field worth of manure. It's just not worth it. And that's exactly what the market's doing right now. It's being sold, it's being sold aggressively. Uh, you got a second uh, name, right? You have a second name in China, a little bit less of a reputation uh, than Evergrande, right? Uh, again, had the same type of issue. Uh, with a potential default and again it's one of those scenarios that shoot first ask questions later a lot of tech got sold a lot of tech got sold today incredibly aggressively and when you look at uh when you look at a scenario just a, on a 60 minute scenario of what we saw today right off the word go these are aggressive candles okay this isn't you know, mom and pop from Wichita, Kansas, getting out of their three shares of Amazon. Okay, when you look at Facebook, you could say what you want today, right? You know, well, Facebook was was the leader of everything going down, right? Right. If it makes you feel better, right? The, the, this is institutional money outflow coming out of these names, and the the next key right now is you have to start looking at big aggressive 
option flow in the downside direction. This is just the reality. We didn't get that much today, or at least I didn't see that much today. I saw it in a certain names. We'll get to that in a second. But once you start seeing deep out of the money uh, put buying coming in for near term expiration, that's when you, you're going to know there is, I don't want to use the word uh, stampede out the door, but that's what you're going to really realize when institutional money starts pouring the outflow. And if you kind of flip that around, isn't that exactly what we talk about when we talk about institutional money flow, betting out of the money calls or near-term expiration for the stock market to go higher? So again, that's something to definitely watch for tomorrow. Uh, there is a name. I'll give you a perfect example. There is a name that I started watching in the afternoon. Again, maybe a lot of you guys trade square, right? This is definitely uh, one of the names that I watch. And today was the first time I saw a seven-figure buyer, right? A seven-figure, he put up premium. Uh, the October 15, 210 puts, I also saw a pretty decent-sized buyer coming in in November, uh, 200 puts. That's exactly what we're looking for. I want to look for names that are starting to break down. You can see this is the first close below all of the support here, okay? So if you start seeing names that you're trading or at least you're holding or watching, whatever the case may be, once you start seeing those deep out-of-the-money uh, near-term expiration coming in on, on the buy side of the puts, you're going to know that institutional money flow now is on the wrong side of the ledger if you're a perma bear, excuse me, perma bull, and now you have to take necessary steps either if you're an investor to kind of slide along, right, to, to kind of get out of the way, or if you're a trader, you start looking at price action, right, price action that you could take advantage of. The same way stocks take out supply and go higher, stocks take out demand and go lower, and, and we've been saying this now for you know, five days in a row. The longer we build below the 50-day moving average, the higher probability the next area of support is going to come. So, you know, is it possible we have a debt cap? Of course, debt cap bounce is exactly what we talked about on the weekend update that happened on Friday. You're going to have a deep a dead cap bounce day. It's not the bottom of the market. It's not for you to you know run out and say, you know, have an arrogance point of view. See, the bears never learn. Ha -ha. No, no, no. This is a dead cat bounces. They get rejected at, around the five-day moving average. And the, the, the more opportunities for them putting in lower highs, continued lower highs, and get comfortable below the five-day moving average, well, that's the shortest term sentiment. Uh, that is the area that you really have to pay attention to because if more names start building and building and building and bears to take control of the 50-day moving average, then you're going to have a, a lot of cases like we saw today. Again, these are violent candles, guys, right? These are violent, violent. This is only two candles of the day. These are violent candles, right? When you look at Facebook, look at these candles. These are violent, violent candles. When you look at Roku today, right off the word go, this is violence. This isn't, you know, this isn't orderly, let me get out of the way, let's take some profits or protect our capital. People want out, right? This is institutional money flow, people want out. So you have to be very, very conscious of this. And the next big area of concentration, if you are a more of a dynamic bull, right? Uh, you have to start looking at the weekly, right? Weekly support here, right? We're below. Think about this. We are below. This is day two below this whole trend line here. If you guys notice what the difference between today's close and the day two close on this rising channel, the day two close reclaimed this whole channel, right? The day two close reclaimed this whole channel. This is the first day on the weekly chart that you can turn around and actually point to and say, well, wait a minute. This is the first day that we closed below the channel. They couldn't reclaim back this whole rising weekly wedge. And now this is where your potential hard landing is uh, off this 333 level. Again, is this the end of the world? Absolutely not. The market's been on a tremendous, tremendous run. This is not, a, you know, this is not a... A video to get you nervous this is not a video, uh, you know, to, to put fear. There's no such thing as fear. Stocks go up, stocks go down. Is the way we buy stocks is the way we short stocks. There's absolutely no difference. The only difference uh, on the short side is you're going to have at times uh, wider spreads. You're going to have a lot more uh, illiquidity because there's less market participants on the downside than there is to the upside. The upside, everybody wants in at one time. Uh, retail wants in, institutional wants in, everybody wants in. Uh, to the downside, it's a little bit different. It doesn't go down in a straight line. There is no panic selling. Uh, there's days that it feels like, hey, bears got trapped, but they didn't get trapped. Again, respect the levels. The longer now we start building below this long, long wedge that we haven't, you know, we haven't been below since, what's this day here? 
uh, April, let's see here, January, February, March, April, April 2020. This is the last time we were below this whole rising wedge. And the longer we build a base below this whole rising weekly wedge, the higher probability it's going to start testing a lot lower these levels. Uh, over time. And again, if you believe in the theory of demand to demand, then we're staring at this uh, 349, uh, 347 level as a potential next soft landing spot. So the idea that if you are uh, only exposure, unfortunately, to a lot of new traders is social media. When you see some 22 year old kid, again, no, no, again, I, I would switch places with any 22 year old kid. I'm 47. I'd gladly give you every worldly possession I have to be 22 years old again. But when again, when you're trading in the market, and your experience is 18 months and you're talking about you know buy the dip well no you buy the dip right you buy the dip again you don't even understand what you're asking for buy the dip only works in a rabid bull market okay buy the dip works only when stocks are coming off the highs that are testing rising uh rising intermediate levels when stocks are below supply the last thing you want to do is buy the dip again if you're turning around and say look i love amazon i think it's going to go to 5,000, right like i say all the time we've been talking about amazon uh the swing potential of amazon ever since it broke the 3290 I agree. I think Amazon in the next five, 10 years will be at 5,000, but it won't be at 5,000 tomorrow. And that's the, exactly what you have to uh, look about. You have to be mature enough. You have to be understanding about. You have to be an adult to understand stocks go down. It's nothing personal. Nobody's trying to make you feel bad. Nobody's trying to say bad words about your stocks. They're stocks. They're going to go up. They're going to go down. When stocks take out supply and buyers clean up sellers, stocks go higher. When stocks close below demand, they start building below demand, stocks go lower. And that's exactly what you're seeing today. And oh, by the way, we still have a whole bunch of slew of news that is over our heads. We still have the debt ceiling. We still have this Evergrande. We still have this new company in China that just kind of raised his hand and say, hey, by the way, I'm having a problem uh, making some payments as well. Um, we, have, we have the tapering thing on, on the table. So the most important part is again if you're a newer trader the last thing you want to do is quote unquote look for breakouts which are not there uh, and the most important part is the last thing last thing last thing last thing you want to do is start swinging anything especially when the predominantly majority of the stocks are below okay uh, are below uh, the daily and the weekly supply. And this is the first thing, and this is the first thing that I noticed today uh, when I started charting macro. Again, this is the first close on the queues below this weekly trend line since January, February, March, since uh, April of 2020. Again, you can take that information uh, any way you want. Uh, again, I'm just an idiot. I've been doing this for uh, 22 years. Other than that, you know, I really don't know anything like anybody else. So it's very, very important to understand the dynamics of the market. And all jokes aside, stay safe, right? Stay safe. If it's not your, uh, if, you're, if it's not your comfort level, if it's not your, uh, you know, sweet spot of kind of feel your process kind of getting point A to point B, again, it's nothing wrong with sitting out, learn to live another day. And the most important part is use this opportunity to kind of store this experience in your mental Rolodex. So if this does apply a year from now, two years from now, five years from now, you've already went through it. And the most important part is you know how to navigate with safety, uh, with calmness, with uh, composure, the most important like an adult. So let's talk about uh, today's action. Uh, again, you had some names that completely got imploded. Uh, my plan today was kind of have an open mind, both sides of the market. I put some longs on, uh, I put some shorts on. I wanted to make sure that everything, okay, was covered, that we weren't, uh, you know, we weren't caught uh, with, with our pants below our ankles. And that's the whole point. And you started seeing slowly but surely pre-market Facebook had a nasty candle, and then it came to a point that really took down pretty much everything else. So let's talk about this. Uh, Micron, again, for some reason, they're holding up the stock. It is, it, for some reason, God knows why, they're holding up the stock, held 73 times. Uh, it, they continue to hold 70. For some reason, this damn thing just doesn't want to break. Uh, Boeing, I was watching to the upside, obviously uh, didn't come close to confirming. Uh, there was actually a nice pop on Netflix, right? 619 needs to build, and obviously it reversed later. But Netflix had a really nice pop at the, at, at the open here. Um, so here was Netflix. It took out the 619, really put up a nice, put up a $7 candle here pretty aggressively before uh, it got rejected. Nice move there. I was also watching CRM, obviously never got close 
uh, to 277. DDOG never got close to 145. DOCN never got close to you know uh, 82. So as you can imagine, all the names to the downside today were very very aggressive. Uh, Facebook just got absolutely annihilated. Uh, 338 held three times. If it builds below, can flush. I, I would have to say. Uh, builds below can flush is a pretty much an understatement. So here is the 338, 338, 338, 338, and here is the 338 pre market. This whole channel here and just absolutely got uh, annihilated, just literally annihilated. And here is, I, I think, one of the more important parts here uh, of the day. And this is kind of what we talk about, re, you know, the retail mindset. And, you know, we talked about this 799 was last week's high. I go FOMO retail will go all in at this level at $800. We all know what happens next, right? When everybody goes in at the same side at the same time, it's gonna get absolutely just just destroyed, right? And if you look at what happened to Tesla today, it got absolutely destroyed. There was a couple of pivots here uh, for, the, for the experienced traders in the live webinar, and, and there was a, a nice little dip, not a great dip, but a nice little dip here. That 797 opening range high, went to that 803, 805 level, and then if you didn't make any sales and you didn't know the supply zone was there, it just got absolutely annihilated. Again, guys, be careful of social media. You know, everybody, you know, look, just, just trust me. Be careful of social media. All you need to know is exactly what's in front of you. Your chart is the same information that a trader for 30 years gets, that a trader that gets for experience level of 30 weeks. What you do with that information is up to you. But again, when retail piles on at the same time at the same price, Usually, no, no, nothing good is going to uh, come out of it. Uh, Netflix, again, take on all the way up, $7 candle there. Uh, Amazon, beautiful move here, uh, $32.33. Uh, here is the macro break, 30, $32.89 from Friday, $32.33 next support. And hold on to old runners. Amazon just got just destroyed, just absolutely destroyed. Uh, it took out the previous channel. It traded down to... Uh, 3233 and then just oh by the way put up another $70 candle excuse me $60 candle uh, to the downside just a huge huge move there uh, this is the, one of the remounts I took 790 went to 793 and just the futures were just too um, just too weak just absolutely too weak and uh, everything got sold off so uh, going into tomorrow uh, again if we get a gap up will be you know will, will kind of be a blessing uh, because again, what we're looking for is if the futures gap up and these stocks gap up into supply, supply will probably get rejected. And I am definitely looking, uh, you know, any channels today to confirm I'm looking for a day two uh, selling pressure. Again, is it possible we have a dead cat bounce tomorrow? Look, everything's possible. Everything's on the table. So you have to make sure you plan ahead for everything. Obviously, there are no daily chart breakouts. They're just dead cat bounces and sneaky channels. So again, guys, be careful. Uh, this is a great learning process for a lot of new traders, especially that started uh, during the, the high of, um, you know, the high of the whole uh, rabid bull market. Again, I know it doesn't feel like now, but this is the best thing that could possibly happen in your development. You're not even, you know, you're not hearing about it, right, of past events. You're living in it. And this eventually uh, is going to pay off with a lot of discipline, uh, lack of FOMO, and every aspect that you need to be a calm, rational adult trader. Guys, have a great night, everybody, and I will see you all tomorrow. Take care.